that Shane Steichen, he didn't sound too good. Sounds like he's got a cold, and he sounds like he's a little more than depressed about the condition of Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson gives the Colts the best chance to win. Gardner Minshew, it's not that he doesn't give them any chance to win, but in the NFL, you win not just because of the plays you avoid on the bad side of the ledger, but the plays you can make on the great side of the ledger. And that's what Anthony Richardson is capable of. He's capable of putting your team in a position to win football games that they otherwise would not win. Gardner Minshew, you know what? He's going to manage you through a game. And it's going to be up to the other guys to make the big plays that put you in a position to win against a really good team. Is the rest of the ro roster good enough to get that done? We're going to find out moving forward, and it all starts this Sunday. Well, yeah, hold on. Let me just start off real quick. Um, just in regards to Anthony, uh, he does have an AC injury. Uh, we're still evaluating that right now. Um, he will miss some time. Um, how much time? I don't know that right now. Uh, and that's all I got on that situation. Shane, right. is, uh, is IR a possibility for Anthony Richardson? Like We're still evaluating all that stuff. Once we get more information on it, we'll, we'll let you know. Greg? Yeah, Shane, uh, I'd like to ask you two. One is, have you looked at these three injuries that have knocked him out and complained to the league about any of them, about the dirtiness or lack, if there was any, on any of those three hits? Yeah, I mean, the one, obviously, he had the knee, just a little bruise right there. He's He was fine from that. Uh, and then the other one, you know, when he was running against Houston, um, just the guy, you know, he tried to make the tackle and, hit him, you know, right there at the end. Uh, and then this one, just looking at the tape, I mean, guy made the tackle and came down on the shoulder. So I didn't think any of them were super dirty, to be honest. Okay. Um, yeah. What is it like just in your shoes? You know, you're, you're there and you've got this dynamic quarterback and, and you're supposed to put this offense in. And, and every time you look around, the guy's getting hurt and it's fluky. But anyway, just how frustrating is it for you to deal with this? I mean, it's tough, you know, when, you know, a guy gets, you know, dinged up like he's been dinged up and uh, he's a, obviously a very, very talented player um, and it's tough. But, you know, we got a lot of faith in Gardner, too, to step in and, and go operate uh, the way he's been doing. Thank you. Yep. Nate. Hey, Shane, just to clarify, when you say Anthony's going to miss some time, are you expecting Gardner to start on Sunday in Jacksonville? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Steven? Hey, Shane. Um, Anthony, I mean, you, you drafted him with the idea that you would use him as a runner, obviously. Um, but is there kind of an acclimation period for a guy to learn the speed of the game, uh, the fact that, I mean, the fact that Harold Landry can catch you from behind, a guy that big, you know? Um, and just how does that play into just how you make decisions on the field when you're, you know, trying to protect yourself, I guess? Yeah, that's a good question, Steve. I, I think, you know, obviously we've talked about this before, but his ability to, you know, do what he does and be a dynamic runner is obviously a big part of his game. And, you know, he's had some huge runs uh, in the games he's played and made some big plays. And obviously you never want injuries to happen. I know it's a part of the game. Um, but, you know, we got to just keep evaluating that stuff. And, again, I say it all the time, but we just got to, you know, continue to be smart with them, you know, moving forward. Kevin, Shane, has um, surgery been ruled out at all, or is that still something on the table? Yeah, like I said, once I have more information with you guys, I'll I'll let you I'll I'll keep you informed. And then when you went back to the draft process with Anthony, how much of their debate was there on you know thirteen game sample size? Maybe we don't have the full like injury stability picture on him, or was that even something discussed? No, I mean, you just saw what he was able to do, uh, his talent uh, and his body size and what he could do. Uh, we loved everything about him. So we were taking him, yeah. Raven? All right, so this Sunday you guys are going to have a rematch against the Jacksonville Jaguars, making your fourth AFC South game in the first six weeks of the season. I know a lot has changed from week one to where we are now, but what do you want to see from your team this week? Uh, I just want to con just continue to see the fight uh, that we've been playing with uh, and the effort we've been playing with. Obviously, division games are huge, just like we had the other day. Um, but to go on the road in Jacksonville, um, you know, it'll be a tough environment. 
a uh, heck of a challenge for us. Obviously, second time playing them, um, you know, get some time, you know, tonight and tomorrow to, uh, to put the plan together uh, to go get these guys ready. Dominic? Yeah, Shane, you've said before it takes four or five weeks to kind of evaluate the identity of your team. Um, with the quarterback situation and the injuries and everything, do you feel like you have a good sense of this team and does that make it more difficult? Uh, we're starting to get a good feel, obviously, five weeks in. Uh, I think it'll take a, co you know, a couple more games, but just the way our guys are playing uh, defensively, playing together, obviously the O-line is gelling and clicking, uh, running the ball good. Um, you know, our, uh, you know, pass, pass, uh, you know, completion percentage, uh, has continued to go up. Um, but I like where we're at, uh, you know, a long ways to go still really, really early in this process. Uh, we got to keep improving every single week. JJ. Shane, the third and six on the 45 on that 14 play driver Gardner gets a seven man pressure and he gets the ball out to Alec. Just what does that say about his level of preparation that he can go through a week of not taking reps with the ones and then be able to hit that play in a critical spot. Yeah, no, it's huge. Uh, just to see the leverage of the defense and the blitz they were bringing there uh, and seeing it and really getting back, you know, over to Alec on that and Alec making a huge play, just seeing the leverage of the corner, knowing that, you know, he could get that ball out quick to him and get that completion. Uh, it, it was huge. Tremendous, tremendous play in the game. George. Sort of related to, to what JJ just asked, but how how different will this week and however long this period is for Gardner be knowing from day one that he's going to be the starter on Sunday? Uh, it'll be, you know, obviously getting that, you know, first team, you know, reps, you know, in practice this week with those guys and continue to gel. Uh, it'll be huge. I think anytime, you know, you get those reps with those guys uh, in practice, uh, your preparation level is even better because uh, you're clicking with those guys. Um, so, Gardner will go through the same process like he always does, um, but obviously he'll be getting the reps. Chat? Coach, along with that, you know, you made it clear that this is going to be a work in progress with Anthony, just learning what he can do, how to use him as the season goes on. Is there some of that with Gardner too? I mean, you know what he can do, but you now you've got to sort of see what he can do with this group and maybe he grows the more he plays. Yeah, I think with anything, you know, the more you play, the more you grow. Um, and, you know, me being around Gardner for, you know, three years now, um, knowing what he's capable of doing uh, will be good uh, for us, obviously, you know, you know, on Sunday. Joel? Shane, you had the uh, two fourth down calls. One, you guys went for it. One, you guys kicked the field goal. What What went into both of those? Um, you know, the one obviously taking the points there and then the other one where we're down in there right before half, uh, we we're trying to get him to jump. They called timeout, saw the look, said, shoot, I think this thing's got a good shot to hit it and, uh, you know, didn't convert it. Um, and that's part of the game, right? If it works, it's, it's good. If it doesn't, should have took the points. Um, but great job by our defense stepping up, uh, holding them there on that fourth and one, uh, and found a way to win the game. When when a play like it was obviously the right play call, you got a, I think more than one wide open receiver. Do you kind of just think of that as like it was the right decision? We just didn't get the right result. Yeah, yeah I mean, so yeah, obviously, you know, like I said, when it when it works, it's it's good, right? And then when it doesn't, you always go shoot. Should we have kicked the field goal there? So, um, but yeah, I, it was it was uh, part of the game. That's part of the game. You live, you learn, and and you grow from there. Two more, James. Shane, when Anthony goes down like that, um, where's the balance when you're like coaching in the game? You obviously have to continue coaching, but you're concerned for a player. So what's that balance like when I would I would imagine you're feeling for him, but then you also have to prepare. OK, things might have changed my game plan, things like that with Gardner Minshew. Yeah, no, that's a good question, James. I think obviously, when you know, when a player goes down, it's it's obviously tough on on everyone. But, you know, you got to, uh, you know, focus in on the task at hand uh, as a coach uh, and trust your preparation um, and trust the guys that whoever's coming in. You know, whoever goes down, that next man up comes in and, and operates at a high level. Then real quick, do you get in like an update at halftime at all? Or do you just like, hey, what got I'm locked into these 15 minutes I have, 13 minutes, whatever it is, to like get my team prepared for the second half? Yeah, no, I get a I get a quick update, you know, on those things just real quick, whatever the injuries are, you know, whether it's a shoulder or a knee or something, whatever. Uh, I'll get a quick update on that. Yeah. Greg. So with Gardner. With Gardner being the guy for the next however many weeks, 
do you wrap him in bubble wrap? I mean, do you do you call games a little different knowing that he's not just a one-time starter, but you might not need him four or five, however, however many times you need him? Uh, I think with anything, especially the quarterback position, you know, you got to, you know, build your offense around what that guy does well. Uh, and so with him being the guy, obviously this week, uh, we're going to build, you know, the offense around this week, what he does well. Actually, one more for, for you, Shane. Would you consider changing the offense at all whenever Anthony is available to come back? Or is that something you have to just kind of look at when you cross that bridge, if that makes sense? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Yeah, we'll we'll cross that bridge uh, when it gets when it gets time. Maybe this is a good question. Um, how is Anthony doing, by the way, mentally? How is he – this keeps happening to him. Is this a good question? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Yeah, he, he's doing good. He's doing good. You know, obviously, when you have an injury, it's it's obviously tough on, you know, on everybody. So, um, um, but he's fighting through it. Shane Steichen just finished talking to the media, gave us an update on Anthony Richardson. Let's hear what that is. 